This is the PTI Consulting Podcast, hosted by Michelle Owen. Welcome along to the latest PTI Consulting Podcast, hosted by myself, Michelle Owen, and today joined by Mike Bodinek, the CEO of PTI, and Nick Orm, who's the CEO of iTech, for a very good reason, because PTI and iTech have teamed up to offer managed services. Um, who wants to go first, Mike or Nick? Why have you done this? You can both sort of give your reasons. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, so uh, it's Mike here. I'll, uh, I'll kick us off. Uh, I think really well, what we've seen in the sports entertainment market, which is obviously PTI's uh, sector, uh, is the, one of the big challenges in the space being that IT managed service provision, given that uh, naturally sports uh, happens evenings and weekends and outside of sort of your classic nine to five support provisions and needs a, a level of dynamism between uh, what happens on one match day versus another. Uh, we're actually recording here today at Ashton Gate Stadium down in Bristol, uh, where ITEC are also, um, uh, also working. Uh, and if we take uh, the, the last rugby game we had here, we probably had an attendance of about 8,000, uh, and that needs one provision. Uh, whereas tomorrow night, uh, at the time we record, we have Bristol um, Bears versus Bath Rugby, which will actually set a new stadium attendance record. Uh, and therefore, what we need is the, the flexibility as a, as a stadium and as a, um, as a sporting industry to be able to burst up and burst down um, to be able to deliver that. And from a PTI perspective, um, we we went and looked into the market as to who was delivering in that space. And iTech came out as a, a, as a clear winner for people who had great experience working in sports and a, an existing sports and entertainment portfolio themselves. Uh, but people who truly understood the, the, the nature of sport and the dynamic nature of the service uh, that you need to offer on that basis. So what makes this um, MSP different to what's out there already? What's on the market today? What makes this different? Uh, well, I think from, from our point of view, um, you know, we've noticed for a long time that the, uh, that the requirements that uh, all organisations have, but particularly in, in sports, is to try and get their technology teams focused on uh, outcomes and business improvement and, and monetizing opportunity, particularly in, in sport and uh, the infrastructure layer, the management of the services, and as, as Mike very rightly said, the ability to burst up and down um, should should be really in, in the uh, realms of, of a specialist organization that, that does that and allow the, the, the staff within um, the uh, the sports club itself to focus on um, sports performance and, uh, and, and delivery of, uh, of, of performance and efficiency and what we really liked about PTI was the fact that many of the sports clubs that we deal with, sports organisations we deal with, still are treating um, all of those aspects very much in silos and I think what PTI seems to be excellent at is, is providing a strategy roadmap for organisations uh, on how they can use, te use technology better uh, within the organisation to, to get the outcomes that they, they want. So we see it as almost a perfect synergy. You know, we work with a lot of clubs who seem to lack that strategic direction, that strategic guidance. Um, and, and obviously from PTI's point of view, they need somebody to fulfil um, the backhaul, if you like, um, so, that, so that PTI and the club itself can focus on, uh, on delivery and performance. So clubs, obviously, with their, with their stadiums and their venues, it's not just one day a week that they're in use anymore. So what level of support will clubs need in the future to help them operate? Yeah, I think that what we're seeing in the sports industry, particularly for those with uh, redevelopment plans or new stadium plans, uh, is that they're really looking to sweat that asset 24-7, be it conferencing and events, be it music, uh, concerts in the, uh, in the summer months, uh, etc. It's, it's very rare now that you find uh, a club thinking that they are building a new stadium for the club. Uh, they're very much framing it as building a new venue where the club will play. Um, so there's a, a subtle but very important differentiation with that. And, and with that change of mindset comes a change in requirements too. Again, even if you look at the, um, the Monday to Friday model uh, in a sports club previously, if you've now got an event starting at 9 o'clock for 500 people coming to the stadium, good chance the organisers in the building at 7 o'clock in the morning making sure the final prep's done. Likewise, if you've got, a, got an evening event, uh, given that that's obviously when people are available, uh, you might have a wedding, you might be a birthday party, you know, those sorts of general things in a, in, a, in a hospitality lounge as a match day would see. Again, they're happening evening and weekends. Um, so that the nature of the buildings are very much becoming 24-7 um, in, their, in their profitability and therefore 24-7 in, in the nature of their support. Well, that's, that's the question as well, I think. The next question, can you offer that sort of... 24 7 coverage for clubs and venues across the uk and you know the uk stretches all the way north of scotland all the way down to brighton is that something you'll be able to provide 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, we've, uh, we developed our uh, 777 um, service cover, so we've got a fully operational help desk, 7am 7, 7 to 7pm, 7, 7 days a week. Uh, and that's really how, a lot of how we grew into uh, retail and into, into leisure and into sports uh, because of that availability of, of weekend cover. And then we have uh, staff who we uh, put on site specifically for uh, match day or event day. Uh, event day cover and we do that yes pretty much uh, nationwide and we're growing that team uh, all the time out of our Bristol headquarters but we're providing it uh, in Manchester we're providing it in um, in Nottingham we're providing it uh, in Glasgow so yeah we're, we're building that competency and uh, and that capability all the time and yeah you have to have uh, you have to have feet on the ground when you need feet on the ground that's the, that's the question as well. I think the next question, can you offer that sort of coverage for clubs and venues across the UK and it stretches all the way north of Scotland, all the way down to Brighton? Is that something you'll be able to provide? I think the, the best example probably is, as we say, where we're sat at Ashton Gates, where iTech uh, have the delivery um, of official technology partner across the group uh, and PTI provide the strategic layer uh, over the top. So we're sort of writing the strategy, iTech are implementing the strategy uh, and that's, um, that's sort of the common fits really that we um, that we saw working together here that we want to replicate and be able to scale elsewhere with the efficiencies that really have been able to drive from it it's um it's, it's very common again in the sports environments that your it uh, or technology team are, are generally quite small and as a result of that are generally quite reactive uh, as in they're having to um they're having to look at the next match day ahead as their key objective for the week because that is the thing that is driving them they haven't got anywhere else to put the work um, one of the things that we're able to do in this relationship with iTech, which is the, the case at um, Ashton Gate and across the Bristol Sport Group, is really ring fence what we consider to be sort of business as usual uh, and make sure that's receiving a high quality of service whilst match days and other items are happening around it, uh, which then means that you're providing a consistency of service that means for a finance team, for example, who may, uh, may care little that there's a match on Friday, but they do need to have their finance system upgraded. The two things can happen in the same week uh, under this type of arrangement because PTR will be writing that strategy out and taking away that workload from an operational team. ITEC will be running the operational side of the, the match day prep and getting those boots on the ground, as Nick described, to, um, uh, to actually make the match day tick. And that leaves the, the layer in between free to actually work on. Uh, whereas a common challenge in, in most of these environments is that small team is dragged in lots of different directions um, simultaneously uh, and as a result of that very little uh, gets delivered as in one go. How bigger impact would that have been having then on their operations being pulled in different directions and being reactive? Well, I think from, from our point of view and our, expe our experience um, you know what the, fo the focus of a lot of these sports organisations is around performance and who's the next player we're going to buy, are we going to sack our manager, who are we going to bring in um, you, you know and and, and and the actual match day experience um, and, and there's a neglect generally um, we see on the whole back office function. You've got to remember that though all of the focus is on that one day a week or two days a week when an event is happening, this is actually a business that's running. It's a business that's, uh, that's selling tickets, selling, selling marketing, selling hospitality um, and, and has you know, large function. Um, finance functions and customer service functions, as well as a whole load of other complications uh, like catering and, uh, and security that's going on right the way through, through the day. So uh, although all of the focus is on those 10,000 people, 8,000 people, 24,000 people who turn up on a Friday night or a Saturday after, afternoon, there's still 100, 120 people who are working in these organisations from nine to five every day doing the same sort of functions as any standard normal business would do, but they don't get the uh, the focus and the investment into those areas but without the focus and investment into those areas they don't have the platform to to grow all of the performance in the other areas that Mike talks about and to to expand the the use of the stadium if you haven't got the the fundamentals right within the business to start with okay so will will the delivery team be fully trade up members of the PTI solution then yeah absolutely it's uh, it's very much a, a, a partnership led approach if you like in that at iTech obviously already have some sports and um, entertainment specialisms through the through the nature of their client base prior to the partnership and PTI uh, are a team exclusively of sports technology and sports entertainment technology experts um, so between us we are cross training and upskilling and, and delivering um, a, a sort of a holistic package I guess one of the big challenges for 
the clubs appointing a, a general uh, managed service provider um, is that the tech stack for stadiums is, is so vastly different. Uh, and if you think of it as just following on from Nick's point, really, one of the ways I used to recruit uh, IT support people to come and work at clubs was to say you can basically go on to work anywhere once you leave uh, because we'll have a retail estate that is worth uh, you know a seven-figure sum uh, and we'll be looking after that as just one part of the job. As Nick Lucy, you'll have a finance team and a big function there. But in fact, our finance function will be much more complicated and much more heavy as a result of the player-related payments and all the other challenges like that. But equally, on the performance side, you've then got uh, doctor surgery at your training ground. So your NHS-type experience is all being generated in one place. Uh, and so to hire an MSP who are great at working in banks to work in stadiums is quite challenging, but you could very easily take a, an MSP that are working in stadiums to work in banks uh, because there's a, there's a much slimmer, um, condensed tech stack uh, to be considered in those environments. So that's, uh, that's really the, the, the combined benefit is you've got two sets of knowledge uh, bases and experiences coming together uh, to almost create super knowledge in, in that respect, which can then be deployed specialist into sports and entertainment. Yeah, one of the requirements that Mike gave us when he was talking to us about this, this partnership was that uh, he wanted a dedicated team uh, quarantined within iTech to, to support PTI and, uh, and their engagements. And we've actually just had the kickoff meeting for that this morning here um, at Ashton Gate, where we brought together our, um, our corporate account director and our um, chief technical uh, architect and uh, technical pre-sales director, but also a dedicated project manager for all of PTI's, um, PTI's work. Um, and a help desk manager who's going to do all of the uh, fulfillment for the managed services uh, and making sure that those people are absolutely aligned to PTI specific requirements. You know, it, it, every, every club is different, um, every sports organisation is different, they have some common themes, uh, but it is probably the area um, in business that we work which has the most amount of bespoke requirements um, in terms of time, in terms of resources, uh, in terms of the mix of use of, of the facility, as Mike quite rightly said, you know, most banks do more or less the same thing, um, and uh, most hotels do more or less the same thing. Um, whereas, you know, these organisations are so vastly different in terms of uh, in terms of their use and their applications and their requirements uh, that without a specialist team from iTech sitting alongside PTI that absolutely learns and understands what PTI is delivering, we won't be successful. And that's why we've, we've taken that approach. And I hope that's one of the reasons why Mike selected us to be the partner. Yes, yeah, so obviously these venues trying to make the most out of being a commercial venue, making the most of their technology as well. So how does this work alongside the CTO as a service solution? Uh, well, ultimately, becomes a, a turnkey offering. One of the reasons that we as PTI have moved into uh, the managed services space, if you like, is we have two distinct products. Firstly, technology audit, uh, and secondly, then CTO as a service, as you, um, as you mentioned. Um, and really, the, the, what the, the output of those two products is, is the technology audit giving you the way you are today, and then the CTO as a service element giving you the way you want to move to tomorrow, and giving that, um, uh, that road mapping and strategic vision uh, across to a club or a venue. Uh, one of the challenges that those clubs and venues were then having were they were looking to an internal IT team who were perhaps um, small in scale, as we discussed earlier. They were perhaps underskilled uh, in terms of the budget that was available to spend on technology and the level of staffing they could get. Or they were turning to their outsourced managed service provider who were charging them extra for working evenings and weekends or not, not competent in terms of the level of technology stack and those specialisms that we've, that we've just talked about. Uh, so really, the, the the managed service offering with with iTech is the complement in the um, in in this in this piece to the doing of that that the implementation of that strategy, uh, and that's what clubs were bringing to us uh, as PTI clients as a requirement to say, great, we now know where we are, great, we now know where we want to get to, question mark, how do we actually get there, uh, and how do we actually put these steps in place and implement this plan, if you like when our internal team uh, are too busy, our external MSP are too expensive, uh, etc. So there's a really nice turnkey will solution between uh, PTI and iTech that we can now deliver, which goes from where are you today, where do you want to be tomorrow, and let's move you there uh, as, a, as a direct do. OK, so do clubs have to sign up for a full season? No, so one of the benefits from, uh, from PTI is that we're, we're flexible and agile to be able to be engaged on, on a different type of basis. Uh, it's very much open to the club and, and naturally the club can take any of these three pieces uh, in silo from that audit versus CTO versus 
managed services and under managed services there are of course a, a whole range of uh, products if you like from help desk and support to boots on the ground on a match day as Nick described earlier through to phone solutions, managed print solutions, uh, Office 365 and cloud migrations, there's a whole wealth of things under there and one of the big benefits that we can provide to clients is you don't need to opt into all of that nor do you have to sign up on a on a significant or long-term basis, you can opt into that and opt out of that as you like. That's the principle really of the as-a-service delivery model uh, that we work to in terms of CTO as a service or DPO as a service in that piece. It's the burst capacity to take it as and when you want it. Uh, and then from the managed services side, it will depend on what people want and how they want to blend it. There's obviously uh, uh, various reasons why you do things on a longer basis rather than a shorter basis and, and vice versa. Um, I think one of the big things uh, that we will promote between the two of us is that flexibility because one of the blockers uh, to the market, and Nick, please, uh, please chip in uh, on this, is people's worry that technology is moving so quickly that they don't know exactly when to invest or how to invest. Uh, and coming back to how the CTO complements uh, the delivery, uh, it's very much around the longer term vision and how do we implement that. Uh, so it may be a longer term engagement, but it may be using different platforms as we go, taking on that um, taken on that journey but what's your thoughts in terms of that Nick? Yeah well, flexibility is absolutely key and again one, once again uh, almost unique in that uh, a sports stadia um, a type type arena if you'll excuse the uh, excuse the excuse the pun there and then we see uh, we've dealt with many sports clubs for, me, for many years I mean one of our very first engagements with, with was with AFC Bournemouth um, and uh, we got engaged with them about three weeks before um, they very nearly went bust and uh, you know we stayed with them for a very long time as a, as a managed print provider um, originally and uh, and look at where they are now and so you know the the, the transformation and the and and uh, how quickly they can grow how quickly they need to rein back sometimes and how quickly they need to change the priorities of where their spend is you know with most corporate organizations we deal with they will make a five-year plan we look, we're expecting three percent seven percent compound compound annual growth We've got 250 staff today. We're going to have 280 staff in three years' time. It's very easy to build a technology roadmap and a fulfilment strategy for those types of organisations. But uh, you know, a lot of these organisations are thinking about moving to a new stadium, redeveloping the stadium, whether they'll actually you know, get around to do it or not do it. And so they, they need a number of different plans and they need the flexibility, um, both in the, in the infrastructure, but, but more importantly, just flexibility and approach uh, to be able to move as they move, uh, either in terms of scale, in terms of ownership, in terms of location, in terms of ambition, um, and indeed in terms of performance. And just following up on that last point, in terms of performance, I guess it's often looked at as a relegation type factor, uh, if you like. We were in the Premier League, we're now in the Championship, or Championship into League One, etc. But we mustn't forget uh, that if you're budgeting to be in the Champions League and you end up in the Europa League, or you're budgeting to be in the Europa League and you end up not. Uh, as, as differentiators, those budget changes affect people pretty much at all levels. Um, yeah, as you start dropping from which European football are you in into there is no European football into I've been relegated to the Championship into uh, I'm getting automatically promoted, I'm in the playoffs, I want to be in the playoffs, I'm trying to stay up, I've been relegated, I'm now in League One. You know, clubs in sort of banks of six almost uh, are fighting with changes in their budget all of the time uh, and you will see that the, uh, the level of flexibility required to cope with that uh, for a club being relegated and potentially relegated again and sadly there are too many examples of that over over recent years need to be able to cut a provision from say 100 percent to 30 percent pretty much overnight as a result of those decisions uh, and we understand that those decisions are outside of uh, their sphere of influence because as much as we'd all love to as respective fans of respective clubs feel like we have some uh, some connection or some lucky routine that gets them to win on a saturday uh, that ain't the reality uh, and therefore the flexibility we want to provide is to be able to grow and uh, grow but also fall away almost as importantly with clubs uh, so they can work with us on a long-term plan but know that they've got the flexibility to scale that up and scale that down reflecting what their current financial position is because as Nick says it's not uh, it's not quite as uh, straightforward as the corporate world. Mm, and just just finally then can you deliver a full end-to-end -end IT MSP solution for all these clubs at their, their various levels as you've just touched on there? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. That's the that's the, the piece of the of the partnership, really, and the ability to work at scale. Uh, is you've got the scalability in terms of uh, the size of iTech, and uh, I'll let Nick cover that um, uh, in, in a moment. Uh, and the scale across the across the nation to be able to work from with clubs in the national league through to clubs in the Premier League and deliver a, a rounded service that's uh, fit and appropriate for 
uh, where they are today and, and sort of where they want to get to tomorrow. Yeah, uh, we have £48 million pound turnover business. We've got 270 technology staff um, working for us. Um, you know, the, the sheer success of PTI, I'm not going to say that, uh, that I can, uh, you know, we are going to have a challenge to keep pace with the success that Mike is building. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary what PTI are achieving, 250% uh, compound annual growth year on year, um, and, and we need to keep pace with that. So it's, it's a challenge that I don't shrink away from. Um, but, but yeah, we have, the, we have the scale at the moment to meet all of Mike's demands, and we are ramping up very quickly to make sure that we don't fall behind him. <laughs> and also, I'm throwing away my lucky, lucky socks now that I found out that Mike, uh, <laughs> that Mike, Mike tells me they do no good at all on match day. <laughs> I, was, I was convinced that they were an absolute success factor. Liverpool haven't lost since I started wearing them. <laughs> Brilliant, guys. Thank you. I think you've, you've covered a lot there. That's, that's brilliant. Uh, that was fantastic speaking to Nick and Mike, both from iTech and PTI, respectively, of how they come together and teamed up to offer managed services. If you head to the PTI website, there's much more information on there as well. Thank you for listening, and we'll be back again soon. Thanks for listening to the PTI Consulting Podcast. Find out more about us at pticonsulting.co.uk.